What's up guys, Blake Baker back with another video. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Please hit that subscribe button for me. So it's no secret that it's a super heavy seller's market right now. Buyers having, are having a tough time uh, locking down homes, getting them under contract. Um, the reason for that is an extreme shortage of housing inventory uh, due to a number of factors, some of which are still insanely low interest rates. I'm still seeing uh, rates down in the threes, which is historically low. And today I want to talk about a few ways you can set your offer apart and hopefully get it accepted in a tough market like this. Number one is going to be a toughie for a lot of people, but if you can pay cash for your home, uh, that's going to set you apart for several reasons. When you pay cash, the bank's not involved. So there's going to be no underwriting. There's going to be no uh, lender required repairs. And there's also, most importantly, going to be no appraisal. So, you know, whenever you're making a purchase uh, with a mortgage, the mortgage company or the bank has to ensure that the property is worth what you're paying for it. With cash, whatever they want to pay, that's what they're able to pay. And there's also going to be, uh, they're not going to have to hold any certain employment status or job history or what have you. Number two. Pay for any negotiables. So negotiables in a contract are title policy, survey, and home warranty. Uh, the title policy is generally paid by the seller, but if the buyer picks up the cost of that, it makes the offer more attractive to the seller because the buyer is paying for the title policy, which in some cases can be a couple thousand bucks. So that puts a couple extra thousand in the seller's pocket that may set you apart the survey the survey on a residential lot in my experience is between 450 and 600 uh it's negotiable between the buyer and the seller uh if you offer to buy your own survey that makes it more attractive because it saves the seller money and your home warranty so a lot of people will ask the seller to purchase a one-year home warranty for the purchase of their new home uh, if you go ahead and just buy your own, again, it saves the seller money and makes your offer way more attractive. Number three, save your money, not only so you can have a good down payment and make your offer strong, but so that you don't need any seller's contribution. Seller's contribution is when the seller just kicks back cash at closing to the buyer to help them pay for the closing costs if they're a little bit short of cash. But uh, like I said, in this market, that's really not happening right now on anything, uh, you know, any hot, good listing. Uh, it's pretty tough to come by, so save your pennies and get all your closing costs ready to where you have no problem paying for them. Number five, offer a lease back. So whenever you write the offer, you can go ahead and offer um, the seller a little bit of time to get moved out of the house after closing. So, you know, that way they don't feel like they have to rush out of the house as soon as uh, closing week comes. It's a more comfortable situation for them and you know, you'll know you close on the house that day and then they'll lease the home back from you uh, for maybe a couple days or a week or however long it's negotiated. Number six, don't ask for anything extra. So if you see a washer and dryer or refrigerator in the home, uh, if you ask for the fridge or if you ask for the washer and dryer or any other non-realty items, uh, it could end up taking a couple thousand dollars off of the value of your offer based on how nice the appliances, the refrigerator, the washer dryer, how nice that stuff is. So in order to come as strongly as possible, again, you just want to keep the most amount of money in the seller's pocket at after closing as you possibly can. Number seven, you're going to want to shorten your option period uh, to as few days as you feel comfortable. Uh, typically in a slower market, we see 10 day option periods. Uh, seven days has kind of become the norm from what I've experienced. And if you don't know what option period is, it's just the first, like I said, 10 days, seven days, five days. Uh, it's all about what you want to offer them. Uh, but during those days, you can back out of the contract for whatever you want. So say if you uh, got an inspection report back, that was just an absolute disaster. You can then back out of the contract and get your 1% earnest money check back. So you know, you would lose the money on the inspection, unfortunately, uh, and the option fee, which is generally two. Uh, lately, I've been seeing 200 bucks, uh, but if you can get that option down to five days, I think that's pretty good. And if you want to risk it, you can actually waive the whole option period, which commits you to the contract and makes the sellers feel like you're absolutely committed to closing the deal. Number eight, and this is the last one. Uh, this is a tricky one but you can waive your appraisal. Um, so say if you're making a purchase of $250,000 uh, 
and you waive your appraisal, you're basically saying, hey, we're committed to paying for this house no matter what. Uh, if the appraisal comes in at 200, we will bring $50,000 cash to closing to make up that shortage in the appraisal. It's that is risky, I think. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. But what you can do is you can set a kind of like a, a floor, if you will. If you want to go over asking price, which is pretty typical in this market, I mean, I'm seeing it all the time. You could say, hey, $300,000 house will offer you 310. However, we do want it to appraise for at least 300, which is what you're asking. So in that case, if it appraised below 300, you would still be able to terminate the contract and get your earnest money back because at that point you can kind of say, hey, I'm not making the best investment uh, here and I don't want to overpay for something. And at that point, you can just back out and go about your business. That's all I got for you. I uh, appreciate y'all watching. If you would, please go follow me on Instagram at Blake Baker Real Estate. Uh, and if you have any questions, call me, DM me, email me, text me. Uh, all my info's in my bio there. So I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day.